Hey guys, once again, I'm sorry that uh, we have to do notes this way, but I appreciate your patience. Uh, I'm just going to present notes like normal and, and uh, expect you guys to take notes just like we normally do. Uh, as I'll mention on another video, uh, we are limited to 15 minutes with the equipment I'm using here, so uh, I might actually have to break this up into two parts uh, if we end up running long. So uh, today we got a couple of different topics we're going to discuss uh, and specifically we're, we're continuing on with the Jeffersonian administration and we're going to see one of his most famous acts, probably his best thing he did while in office, uh, and that's the Louisiana Purchase. Uh, we'll continue on and look at how the Democrat Republicans established uh, their, their own control of the country uh, and in particular we're going to see what happens when Napoleon starts to get frisky over in Europe uh, and the effect it has here. So uh, we'll go ahead and get started uh, by taking a look at the Louisiana Purchase and uh, if you look at the, the map down in the bottom right uh, you'll see that this will effectively double the size of the United States once it is purchased. Um, for, so very big. The, the place we are sitting as we speak uh, was a part of the Louisiana Purchase uh, and this allowed for a lot of um, uh, expansion within the United States uh, and solidified Jefferson's ideal of an agricultural society. So let's go ahead and get into it and take a look at some of the specifics uh, within the Louisiana Purchase. Uh, well first of all the Purchase takes place in 1803 and uh, the purchase, as we know, came, uh, we bought the land from France. Uh, it's a total of 828,000 square miles. Uh, and this, this area had switched hands a few times, and it gets a little confusing. Uh, for about 70 years, from 1699 to 1762, uh, when they had ceded the territory to Spain, uh, as well as Britain after the Seven Years' War, uh, France is going to regain this territory uh, in 1800. Now, uh, 1800 is the same year that Napoleon takes power, uh, and early on Napoleon had this idea of reestablishing a grand French empire uh, in the Americas. And in fact, he had a foreign minister, his name was Charles Maurice de Talleyrand, uh, T A. L L Y, or excuse me, T A L L E Y R A N D, uh, and Talleyrand uh, had this this idea, the suggestion uh, that you know perhaps uh, this land uh, you know would would make for a good uh, base uh, of an empire, but it's actually going to be Talleyrand that ends up offering the land to the United States. Uh, and another thing we've discussed in the past, the Haitian Revolution is really what changes their mind about this. Um, because in the early 1800s, the French have a very difficult time, as we know, down in the island nation of uh, Hispaniola, in particular on the western side, uh, when the Haitian Revolution breaks out. The bloodshed there, the, uh, the constant thorn in the side of Napoleon, it makes him rethink this whole strategy of having uh, another empire in the west. Beyond that, by uh, the early 1800s, Napoleon's also worried about Britain. Uh, he knows that uh, things between uh, uh, Britain and France, uh, war is looming, and so he changes his mind on it. Uh, the United States had been interested in purchasing the city of New Orleans. And we'll talk about the importance of New Orleans later on, but um, basically, you know, New Orleans controls access to the Mississippi River in which uh, really you have all of the trade happening within the United States uh, having some impact or connection to the Mississippi River. Very important river, very important city. So the U.S. had, had offered to buy up New Orleans and Talleyrand basically said, well, how much for the whole thing? Uh, and we were shocked by that. We were shocked that uh, the French would be able or be willing to sell uh, that, that land to us. And we ended up buying about 530 million acres uh, for the price of $15 million, and that's about four cents per acre uh, in today's money. That's about $236 million. Um, you know, I think Instagram sold for, what, a billion? So they could have had four Louisiana purchases. I don't know. I think that's a better deal. Uh, but that, that equates to less than 42 cents per acre 
in today's money. Um, very cheap, quite the bargain. And not only that, but this effectively allows for the United States to double in size, as I said. Uh, Napoleon was aware of how important this was for us. And in fact, he was quoted as saying, quote, the sale of Louisiana assures forever the power of the United States, and I have given England a rival who, sooner or later, will humble, humble her pride. Napoleon understood that we could be that thorn in Britain's side. Um, so, you know, Napoleon was uh, very strategic with all the moves he made, um, and the Louisiana Purchase uh, was one of them. Now, the Louisiana Purchase did end up, um, it was not a for sure thing. Um, you know, when I've talked in the past about uh, Thomas Jefferson, I've talked about how, how much of a strict constitutionalist he was, you know, how um, ideological he was, and, and he feared big government. Well, here you have the government um, buying up so much land, effectively doubling the United States, but guess what? The Constitution doesn't say anything about the ability of the government to purchase land. Uh, and, you know, when Jefferson is uh, kind of berated for this, hey, listen, you're supposed to be small government, um, he kind of responds, meh. Uh, he, he doesn't really have much to say to, the, to his opponents that suggest it's unconstitutional to purchase this territory. He effect, effectively ignores uh, those opponents, and uh, he, he understood the benefits of ridding the United States of, of not only French presence, but also adding the security of the Mississippi River and New Orleans. Um, but as I mentioned in the intro, you know, the ideological reasons are there as well. By adding millions of acres to the United States, Jefferson is allowing for the spread of that agrarian-based economy. Okay? He's allowing the United States to move west, manifest destiny, as we've talked about in previous units. Um, you know, a dream of an agrarian-based republic, it basically requires vast amounts of land uh, for future generations to till. So, therefore, the, the Louisiana Purchase can, can be seen not only as uh, a, a political victory for the United States, but also as an ideological victory for both the Jeffersonians uh, and the Democratic Republicans. Now, that's great. We bought up all the land, but the fact was we didn't really know what we had just purchased. Uh, in fact, we um, uh, many people actually called it the, the vast American desert. In fact, you see some early maps, they mention the vast American desert. People actually thought that perhaps this land wasn't any good. Um, and so Thomas Jefferson is going to send out... Um, He's going to send out two men uh, to lead an expedition that will explore the Louisiana Purchase. Um, Jefferson is going to send Captain Meriwether Lewis and Second Lieutenant William Clark to both explore and also map out the new territory. We still didn't even know if the rivers connected, including the Missouri River, if it had any connection with the Pacific. Imagine the possibilities if we could establish trade through the Pacific um, or even just to the West Coast, California, which will be falling under our power within the next three decades. Um, but imagine the, uh, the economic impact you could have. You could establish easier trade with China. Um, you know, this could have some very big impacts on the United States. So their main goal was to establish a trade route to the West. But as a side note, they collected scientific specimens. They documented wildlife. Uh, and they established friendly relations with Native American groups living west of the Mississippi. I, I will mention not all of them were friendly. In fact, um, there were a few skirmishes between them. And, and in fact, uh, surprisingly, only one man died uh, on, the, on the entire core of discovery, as they called it, uh, even though it lasted almost a year and a half from May 1804 to September of 1806. The core of discovery lost only one man. And he actually died from an appendicitis. Even though they were attacked along the way multiple times, they only lost one man. It was to natural causes. So uh, Louisiana Purchase, um, it, it turned out to be a great deal for the United States. Lewis and Clark uh, explored it and, and showed the vast possibilities as also the, the uh, 
the amount of natural riches within it. Uh, and, and it makes for a great read. You can read Lewis and Clark's uh, diaries today and um, pretty, pretty amazing. We're going to go ahead and stop right now. We'll pick back up with the Embargo Act, uh, the Non-Intercourse Act, and Macon's Bill Number 2, which are all three IDs that you will need to complete uh, before our test. We'll talk about the United States' attempts uh, to keep out of war with Britain, uh, unsuccessful attempts, and then we'll wrap up by talking about uh, the results of the, the New Republic. Uh, you know, when Jefferson leaves office, uh, what exactly has he done and, and what have we done to establish the, the early republic moving forward?